Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm trying another mix of Schmincke French Ultramarine with Michael Harding Transparent Yellow. Transparent Oxide Yellow. Transparent Yellow Oxide, I can't remember what the name is. Which way around the name is, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's something like that. Yes, and I think I've decided I've already mixed the Carpet Mortem and the Permanent Brown. With my French Ultramarine, I've decided I'm just gonna mix all my Michael Harding colors with the French Ultramarine because with the 11 colors I've got now, I'm pretty happy with my palette, I think. And the only thing that I could imagine needing to, um, that I might want to add is a French Ultramarine. And because I'm not gonna buy more French Ultramarines, uh, uh, more Ultramarines because I have so many, I'm just gonna mix them all with my friend Schmincke French Ultramarine, which is my favorite anyway. And during the talk and workshop with Michael Harding at my local art shop, I tested the Michael Harding French Ultramarine. It's not French Ultramarine, I think, sorry. Well, I tested the Michael Harding Ultramarine and I thought it's not gonna be one I was gonna get anyway. Because, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's nice and everything, but it's not, it doesn't add anything new to what I already have. And I guess at this point, I'd rather try out some other pigments that I don't know yet. And yeah, I think I've just accepted French Ultramarine from Schmincke is my favorite Ultramarine and I don't need any others necessarily. That said, Michael Harding has a Lapis Lazuli, which is the, I guess, the natural form of PB29. Oh, what did I do? That was not what I meant to do. I've added more blue, but didn't water it down, so I guess, but I need some more pigment on my palette now anyway. Well, Lapis Lazuli is what used to be ultramarine back in the day, and it was really, really expensive. It's still quite expensive. Like the Michael Harding Lapis Lazuli is one of only two of the, the range of colors in, in series five, so and those are really expensive. And I thought about maybe getting the Lapis Lazuli, but... I mean, it's, that's one of kind of nice to have if you have an interest in pigments and things like that. But with, I think for me, with a pigment or with a paint that's so expensive, even if it's like, even if it's very pigmented, I'm not sure how much I would actually use it. So I decided, no, you know what? I'm gonna go with series one and two by paints that I know I'm actually going to use, because what's the point of having a paint that you're not going to use, right? And so, because it's very likely that I'm going to mix my French Ultramarine with any of my Michael Harding paints, I'm just going to mix them all and see what they, what kind of mixes I can get. And I'm very happy with this range, in fairness. They look very nice. Hang on, let's see if I can... My paint folder is filthy again, as it usually is. I really like this transparent oxide yellow. The only thing is light fastness isn't, the light fastness of this isn't great. I think it still has like something like good light fastness but it's nowhere near very good or excellent so that's a bit of a shame but it's my bad I didn't pay attention to light fastness when I was deciding on my colors which was a bit silly but yeah here's a nice little mingle swatch so I can see how these two disperse with one another so here we are this is, in fairness, going to be a mix that I'm going to be using quite a lot, and I'm happy with all of those. So, that's very good. And because those paints are both granulating, 
quite a bit. So when you mix them together, you get like lots of granulating mixes as well. That is always a bonus in my book. Thank you very much for joining me today. Please give the video a like and consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.